Congratulations, you've got an Ingersoll Rand air compressor. With some quick, easy maintenance, you can ensure optimal performance. This video is finding out if your compressor isn't building pressure or not making air and how to change that. To start, you're gonna need a torque wrench, adjustable wrench, pliers, combination wrench, and a ratchet with sockets. We'd also recommend safety glasses, cup-proof gloves, and steel toe shoes while doing the job. And this should take about 45 minutes of your time. How will you know if your air compressor is not building pressure? The main symptom is if it doesn't reach the max rated pressure after running for a long period of time. For this model, it's 175 PSI. If that's happening, there are a few quick questions to ask yourself. Is the unit making any pressure in the air tank? Can it reach 175 PSI over time? Or is it leveling off at midpoint pressure, like 50 or 100 PSI? Next thing you want to do is check the oil level and make sure it's filled to the bottom of the threads in the fill hole. You'll also want to check the incoming voltage to the compressor. Next thing to try is a pump-up test. This will show you if the compressor is taking too much time to build pressure. To do a pump-up test, empty the air tank, close off the service valve at discharge, and record the amount of time it takes to reach 175 PSI from zero. For this 2475 unit, it should take about five minutes and 20 seconds. You can also test the pump-up time for the cut-in point of 135 PSI to the max rate of 175 PSI. This should take just over a minute. If your pump-up times exceed what we're saying, you'll need to troubleshoot for deficiencies in the compressor parts. The first item to check is the air inlet filter. To do that, first remove the wing nut from the housing and then remove the cover of the inlet filter. Check the air element and then the filter for dirt, debris, or anything else blocking or obstructing. If the element is dirty, replace it with a new part. Anything you see should be removed or cleared out. Put the element and cover back in place then you want to hand tighten the wing nut to secure the air inlet assembly. Next, look over the compressor for major leak sources, like the service valve or the drain valve being left in the open position. Also, while it's normal for a reciprocating compressor to have some oil pass through, check for signs of the unit passing excessive amounts of oil to the air tank. You can do that by opening the drain valve at the bottom of the tank and watching for oily residue coming out. This would be evidence of oil passing through bad rings in the cylinders. Now, those are rare conditions, but they would affect the unit's ability to make air pressure. Additionally, check to make sure the downstream air demand isn't greater than the compressor's ability to make air. The next place to check is the belt condition and tension. Make sure the compressor is turned off and disconnected from power. Then remove the rear portion of the belt guard by twisting and removing the four PVC clips. You can do this with 90 degree turns using pliers. Doing so can give you a better view of the belt so you can check the condition and inspect it for cracking, fraying, chunking, or glazing. To replace or tighten the belt, loosen the four bolts that have the motor attached to the base mount plate. Then slide the motor towards the pump. A little tip to remember. Mark the spot where the motor was located before loosening it. Slip the belt off the two pulleys, put the new belt onto the pulleys, and then pull the motor away from the pump. You should use a commercial belt tensioner before tightening the motor in place. Adjust the belt tension to about half an inch of deflection. If you're not sure what that means, check your owner's manual for details. Put the belt guard back on the unit and fasten it by reinstalling the four PVC clips. The most common cause of a unit not building pressure is a broken or bent reed valve, which is usually on the low pressure side of the pump. A defective valve allows the compressed air to push out from the air inlet instead of through the intercooler to the high pressure cylinder. A telltale sign of a bad reed valve is the unit pumping up to the level of 40 to 80 PSI and then just stay in there. Also, when a valve break happens, you may hear a chirping noise from the heads. You may also hear the pressure relief valve release, which sounds like a popping noise. To make sure this is the issue, remove the heads off the unit you do this by simply loosening the cap screws with a wrench or ratchet and inspect the gaskets and valve plates for damaged parts. Now, the good news is Ingersoll Rand has valve gasket kits available to repair this section of the compressor. One kit contains a valve plate, valve plate gasket, and a head gasket for both cylinders on this compressor model. With the heads removed, remove the valve plates and the two gaskets. Then just replace them with the new parts from the kit. Reattach the heads and torque the cap screws to 75 foot-pounds. On single stage and TS model compressors, the cylinders are side by side versus being in a V-shape, like this example of model 2475. On these side by side units, it's possible for the head gaskets to rupture in between the two cylinders. 
If this happens, it results in the compressed air getting pushed in between the two cylinders rather than out to the air tank with the unit builds to about 80 PSI. Again, valve gasket kits are available for these units, so we have you covered. Another thing to check if your compressor isn't building pressure correctly is the capacitors in the motor. If these aren't performing like they should, the motor isn't getting enough power to turn the pump at the proper speed. This means it isn't compressing air efficiently. This can even cause the breaker to trip and the compressors won't start. A qualified electrical professional can perform a visual inspection of the capacitors for swelling, cracking, or leaking. They can also check the readiness of the parts by using a digital multimeter. This checks the microfarad reading to make sure what's coming out matches the rating that's printed on the side. Capacitors with low readings or even visible damage can easily be replaced in the motor. And now you can enjoy your highly reliable and low maintenance air compressor from Ingersoll Rand delivering the right power for your project.